Today we'll talk about reverberation, also called reverb, which is a shortening, which is a phenomenon that happens to sound in relation to space. So let's first imagine a space. So we have a room, let's say it's a rectangular room like this, with a musician who's our main source of sound and a little dot here who also happens to be a oud player. So basically the oud is a Arabic string instrument who's from the family of the lute. So this is uh, an abstraction of the oud. And uh, in this room there's also a listener with a listening ear. Now when the oud player starts playing, the listener receives the sound from the main source, direct, followed by the reflections of this sound onto different surfaces of the room. So we have already four visible surfaces and also we have to take into account the ceiling and the floor. So we can have this, this, like this. The ear cannot differentiate the main source from these reflections, so it will hear it as one sound uh, resonating in that space. We notice the phenomenon of a reverb mostly once the main source stops. So basically, the sound leaves a trace that lasts for a certain period of time. How long is this period of time? This depends on mostly four factors, which are first, the frequency or the range of frequencies produced by our main source. Second, the size of the space. Third, the shape of the space. And last but not least, the material covering the surfaces of the space. Let's talk now about the reverberation time. So in the 19th century, the American scientist Wallace Sabine did a series of experiments to measure the reverberation time of different spaces. And he came up with a formula that says reverberation time in seconds equals 0 0.161, which is a constant, times the volume in cubic meter over surface in square meter times the coefficient of absorption. So if we just look at this formula with basic math, we can conclude that the bigger the volume of the space, the longer our reverberation time. On another note, the higher our coefficient of absorption alpha, the shorter our reverberation time. Now let's talk a bit more about this alpha, this coefficient of absorption and what it means. So basically if we have a surface and a sound source, the sound reflects onto the surface. The surface absorbs a quantity of the sound and then it reflects another quantity. So this capacity of 
the surface of the material of covering the surface to absorb the sound is actually our coefficient of absorption. Now each material has its own coefficient of absorption. Here are some examples. Of course these are rough numbers as the coefficient changes depending on size, frequency and specific material. All coefficients span from 0 to 1, 1 being the most porous and therefore the most absorbent. The reverberation time in the most absorbent environment will be the shortest. Every room, every hall, every corner in every alleyway interacts with sound differently. They have their own sonic identity. Let's pause and open our ears to what all these spaces have to 